President Bola Tinubu has again assured Nigerians that his administration will fix the country's economic challenges, including bringing down the skyrocketing inflation rates. While the president was speaking to the All Progressives Congress Presidential Campaign Council uh, during IFTA at the State House, he says although he does not have a magic wand, he is determined to end inflation. And it is the hard job that you promised the people of Nigeria when you were campaigning for me. You promised them a good result. Yes. Didn't you? Yes. That's it. I have to work for it. No magic wand. I campaign on hope. I have to rest on that hope and push for that hope for the joy of every one of us. The economy is looking good. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Yes, we know we have the challenge of inflation. It's okay. We will bring it down. An optimistic President Bola Tinubu there. Well, joining us now is Professor of Finance and Capital Markets at Nasarawa State University, uh, Uche Uwaleke. I hope he's uh, as excited, as optimistic as President Tinubu uh, is. Very upbeat there. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Good to see you. Thank you, Ngozi. So, President Tinubu, let's take it from, you know, uh, his point of view where yeah. he says look the economy things are beginning to look up yes inflation we're battling against it but look i'm bringing it down just like i've done with the dollar at a point it was a thousand eight hundred naira to the dollar and now it's about two one thousand two hundred and fifty all of these indications have been pointed out does it really say that indeed this economy is <coughs> beginning to take off properly well i, I share in his optimism um uh, in the you know hope that um, you know he eventually the, the administration will get a handle on um, on inflation. Uh, of course, talking about um, whether the economy it's, uh, things are beginning to look up. Uh, if you look at um, uh, GDP growth rate for the uh, fourth quarter of 2023, we saw some improvement from 2.46 in quarter three to 3.46 uh, uh, in quarter uh, four of 2003. Um, uh, you mentioned its exchange rate, yes, beginning to s some semblance of stability, you know, there. But inflation remains a major challenge, um, still stubborn, still mm -hmm. elevated, at 31.7%. And that's talking about headline inflation. Food inflation is as high as 38%. And um, in some states, according to the National Bureau of Statistics, it's as high as 46%. In Kogi State, for example, mm. it's as high as 46%. So it's a major challenge. And uh, his statement, in my view, is a rec recognition of the fact that the inflation challenge is not that of the central bank alone. I've always argued that the central bank alone cannot tackle inflation uh, you know, um, in Nigeria. Uh, so it must be uh, a joint effort between the monetary and fiscal authorities. And that's because more because of the factors that are driving inflation you know, in Nigeria. Mm. So they are not only monetary factors. So um, inflation is not something, the w where it is today, is not something we'll say we'll bring down just by hiking a uh, the monetary policy you know, rates, or by increasing the cash reserve requirement, or by looking at it just from the monetary side. The fiscal side must come in. So when the president says you know, he hopes to bring inflation down, I want to believe that he's also addressing those uh, supply side issues, those structural issues, okay? Issues, for example, like insecurity. Right. Insecurity is a major factor driving inflation in Nigeria because farmers are unable to go to farms. Yeah. So I'm sure he has that kind of thing in his mind. He's also, I'm sure he's also talking about the issue of uh, even uh, transport um, challenges, including mm -hmm. rising energy costs. And that's why I think the, um, this issue of um, you know, removing subsidy on electricity, okay, even, even, if, even when they ag you know, argue that it's just for 15% mm -hmm. of the 2 million, 12 million electricity consumers, I also think the multiplier effect will complicate the objective of bringing down inflation. Mm -hmm. So it is certainly going to escalate, you know, the, the current challenge, okay? Um, because look at the, look at the, if you trace the, you know, the, even the uh, trend, 
anytime we have had any increase in electricity tariff, inflation spikes. Mm -hmm. So okay, so this uh, measure is likely to you know drive up inflation, which is also why I would suggest that the, uh, if possible, this should be diff this should be shaved, this should be suspended or deferred, to, you know, to a time when you know the government will have had a good handle on inflation. Mm -hmm. If we're able to moderate inflation to say 21.4% target that they have this year, for example, we're able to stabilize exchange rates, okay? Mm -hmm. Our refineries, you know, um, come on board and they're beginning to function. Then you can talk about, uh, you know, uh, you know take, taking on this other reform because right. this is a reform. Okay, all the reforms, in my view, must not come, um, you know, all at once, all at once. All at once on, mm -hmm. on a plate. Be, be, because you know, listening to you now, uh, uh, Professor Waliki, it, it tells one thing that the, the gains, uh, because you said about saying you shared the same optimism, Absolutely. you know, uh, but it looks like the gains uh, that we are recording so far yes. just might be eroded by this uh, increase oh. uh, in electricity tariff. Yes. Uh, the moment you mentioned Kogi State, yeah. what comes to mind is what subnationals can do. Uh, you just highlighted some of the key things that the government at the center can do. Yeah. What are those things that the subnationals uh, can do in addition to what you highlighted that can also help us uh, back, uh, get back on winning ways? Yeah, yeah. Subnationals, you see, at, as we speak, subnationals are getting so much uh, money uh, by way of, um, you know, FAC receipts. So one of the things they can do is to ensure that any excess money they get, you know, on account of this um, maybe Naira um, high exchange rates, mm. okay, or exchange gain, should be applied to productive, you know, um, areas, okay. The subnationals can also help, especially in the area of agriculture. The government is talking about massive agri program. The subnationals, remember, the state governors are the ones that are in charge of um, uh, land. Mm -hmm. Okay, subnationals can play a major role, uh, you know, in where, where, when it concerns, um, uh, you know, agriculture. Because come to think of it, the major challenge we have with inflation today is the food challenge. <laughs> if you look at the National Bureau of Statistics, uh, twelve divisions. They have what is called twelve divisions. Okay, right. the contribution of uh, each of the items, food and non-alcoholic beverages, according to the last report, accounted for 16.4%. You have inflation rate at 31.7%. Food alone is accounting for 164 mm -hmm. Next to it is electricity and you know, gas and other fuel, 5.3%. Mm -hmm. You have um, clothing, okay, uh, 24 and then transport, too. So if you take out the major four, these ones I've, I've, I've mentioned now, mm -hmm. they account for about 25% of the inflation rate. Inflation is at 1.7. So if you're able to deal with this major four, yeah. okay, you just have about 6% which um, uh, of, of will now be within the central bank uh, th you know, band. Okay, and that's why I said the major uh, driver, the major thing we should focus on is how to ramp up you know, food, which is also why insecurity mm. is part of it. So the states have a role to play to make sure we ramp up um, you know, uh, food production. Okay. Well, it does look like the president has his mind on more long-term measures. He, he spoke about student loans, you know, uh, that it's, it's, gonna, it's a game changer. Yeah. It's when it's, you know, when it comes uh, on stream. And he also said, look, he raised the question, very fundamental question. Yes. What's happening to our solid minerals? So let me ask you that. Yes. What should be happening with our solid minerals, especially when you talk about subnationals? Yes. Okay, well, um, even, even before that, you, you talk, you're talking about medium term. Right. Okay, that's very, that's very important. Now, if you look at the well, part of why I also think when we are churning our policies, we should try to do kind of general equilibrium analysis, not just a partial you know, equilibrium analysis. We should try to see the effect, likely effect of removal of electricity subsidy mm -hmm. on the overall economy. For example, if the government is removing subsidy because he hopes to save maybe um, 150 billion or 200 billion on a monthly basis, what about the consequence? Okay, you remove it and maybe firms are unable to, uh, you know, uh, produce. Of course, if they don't produce and don't make money, they don't pay you tax. Right. Okay, so what about the possible losses the companies are also going to have, the government is going to have from uh, uh, taxes? If you check the uh, fact that was allocated, that was shared, in February, about one point something trillion. If you look at the factor that's contributed to, the, to that fact, okay, companies' income tax declined. Mm. So it was more from a petroleum, you know, a profit tax. Companies' income tax is on the decline. So any measure you have that will affect companies' income tax will also affect your revenue 
you know, at the right. end of the day. So on the issue of solid metals, of course, that's also where, you know, the state should um, come in. But it's not just the state. The federal government and the state should also, you know, work together, to, you know, to ensure that the states also have sufficient control over the solid minerals, in, you know, um, located um, within their states to be able to, um, you know, ha harness them. Mm -hmm. So subnationals, no doubt, have a lot of role to play, which is also why I, I commend the government for setting up this coordinating um, you know, you know, committee, oh. and within the coordinating committee, we also have uh, you know some st state governors. Okay, so the role of the coordinating committee is to coordinate, in my view, both fiscal and monetary policy, so that they don't work at um, you know cross at cross purposes. purposes. Yes. Mm. Uh, and you know, now <coughs> we're talking about sectors. Uh, perhaps so we should also talk about one that is almost uh, talked uh, in the subnational, the uh, grassroots. Uh, the grassroots go governance mm. uh, has a role, no doubt, to play, but sometimes. We all look towards Abuja and even ignore the states. So how can they also help? Because it looks like all hands must be on deck to Absolutely. get us out of what we're doing, yes. uh, what, where we then are at the moment. Yes, when you talk about grassroots, the government that is closest to grassroots, you know, is the local government. Am I correct? So that mm. is the government that is closest to the to grassroots, the people, yeah. to the people. And as, as we speak today, uh, the reality is that the um, local government um, is weak. It's weak because they, they are not also enabled, okay? Um, we all know how the you know, st state government... Stifle. Uh, yes. Um, like. You know, and yeah. don't really uh, ensure that they have access to funds that are mm. meant, meant for them. <coughs> which is also why I'm suggesting, where is it possible in all of this arrangement for the federal government and the state government, maybe through the neck, to sit down and say, let's even uh, allocate one billion naira on an annual basis for the next four years. One billion naira directly to the local government. The seven forty-four. The seven hundred seventy-four. So that that means we we'll bring out seven hundred seventy-four billion so, yeah. every year in our budget to make direct direct intervention. So they don't pass through the state governors, and they don't also pass through direct intervention. Direct. Mm. That, that means that what that means is that you set up um, um, maybe a committee. Local governments, they know the, the, the people, the opinion leaders or leaders, yeah. religious leaders. These are people that will be, you know, started with the responsibility of, um, you know, managing the funds. To and do those what funds exactly will be for, with no, the, one, no, for the one billion projects. Now. What you, exactly would it, for, should it for, be going into? For projects. The local right. government will decide what they want to do with it, but for, uh, for specifically for tangible projects, uh -huh. whether it's for skill acquisition center, whether it's even for this um, uh, small scale, whatever, yeah. they will engage. Uh, you know, the youth. Mm. You know, if you do that, imagine putting one billion naira in a local government for the next four years. That's four billion. Four billion coming into a local government is um, huge money. These, these are areas that don't yeah. see um, 100 million, you know, um, mm. in a month. Very quickly. And then um, yeah. what that would also do, mm. it will reduce rural urban migration. migration. Okay? Because you see a lot of activities happening, you know, in the, in the rural areas. Today, as we speak, okay, part of why you also find urban Urban inflation is 33 percent, about you know close to 34 percent. Yeah. Okay, rural inf rural inflation is 29 percent. So this hike in electricity tariff will further widen the you know yeah. the gap between urban and rural inflation. So until you create activity in the rural areas, okay, you won't see the GDP, GDP of the rural areas will continue to. So to fixing the rural areas is actually core to any developmental. Uh, you know, uh, processes. Very quickly, on the issue of the Naira gain, how sustainable do you think it is? I mean, <laughs> well, we're, 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 we seem to be gloating over the improvement, uh, you know, in the Naira. Yes, uh, what, what has now. happened, you see, Central yeah. Bank has um, been in hiking rates, um, okay. and that has uh, incentivized, um, mm -hmm. you know, foreign portfolio investments. Uh, so uh, much of what has happened by way of um, liquidity has come from that. We also know that um, the good news too is that crude oil theft has reduced, so crude oil production has in, in improved. Oil price, the last time I checked, was $87 per barrel. So we also have some um, improvement you know, in that direction. So how sustainable? Uh, that's the question you asked. Mm -hmm. The only way we can sustain you know, stability in exchange rates is sustainability is medium to long term is you know, true production. Okay? okay, I mean, this is a given, it's true production. Mm -hmm. Anything we are doing now is just a stopgap. Because at the end of the day, the people you sold your, your uh, uh, treasury bills, short term securities, three months, six months, after three months, six months, they will still come to um, you know, take back their money. Mm -hmm. And when they are exiting, the same problem you know, is, is created. Okay, and that's why I feel the idea of um, using interest rates 
you know, um, because we want hiking interest rate for the purpose right. of attracting uh, portfolio in, um, investors. For, for me, it's um, of course it's a temporary measure. Um, it's not something that we should really focus on. We should right. really focus on okay. things that um, will um, uh, well, are sustainable. We must say thank you very much for joining us, um, Professor you. Uche Waleke, Professor of Finance and Capital Markets at Nasarawa State University. <laughs>